Jesus. Um, Lord has sent Brother Kenny Gooch, I got that right? That's right. Brother Kenny Gooch our way. Uh, he was extremely stimulating in Sunday school, and I believe he's going to keep your attention in the church. So he's going to come and share what the Lord's like for us are. Well, it is a delight to be with you here this morning, and I always thank the Lord uh, for the opportunity to share, and uh, just on behalf of Brother Bruce Conley and the uh, local association, Blue Ridge Association, just want to uh, thank him for uh, making a contact to me, and for uh, Brother John to give me an opportunity to come and uh, take some time and share with each of you here today. Um, I guess uh, just thinking about the, the holiday and the season, this is a very, very important uh, holiday. It's a very, very important time uh, of the year. And, and I'm a little fearful that somehow here in America, we, I feel like we've kind of lost sight of what our holidays really mean. I, I think that a lot of times that many people are uh, having holidays and, and it's become kind of, oh, I get a day off of work, yay. And then we, you know, pig out. The Bible calls that gluttony. And regretfully, there's a lot of them, you know, that find holidays as a time basically just to get drunk. And, and, and again, I fear that we've lost sight of the importance <laughs> of the holidays that we have. Did you know that God actually gave Israel seven holidays so that they could remember Him and what He has done for them and the importance uh, of His work and ministry among them? I think that as we think about our ho holidays and as we celebrate this particular holiday, Memorial Day, that we need not get it confused with Veterans Day where we recognize those of our men and women who have served in the military and are still with us. But Memorial Day is that time where we remember those men and women that literally love their nation, love their families enough that they were willing to put themselves in harm's way and pay the ultimate price. I dare say that there may be some of you here this morning that you have a family member or a close friend who has a family member that literally has given their, their life for our nation. That's a significant thing. Amen. And I'm, again, hopeful that tomorrow you will take some time and you will reflect on the truth that there were those that have come before us, and even some in our own generation, that are still fighting all around the globe, who are daily laying down their life, putting themselves in harm's way, that we might retain the freedoms and the liberties that God has given us. You know, the Apostle Peter tells us in 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 16 through 17, act as free men, but do not use your freedom as a covering for evil, but use it as bond slaves of God. Honor all men. Love the brotherhood. That's the body of Christ. Fear God and honor the king, or in our case, our president, our leaders, our legislative branch. Paul picks up on that same theme in Romans 13, 8, and he says, don't owe anything to anyone except to love one another. For he who loves his neighbor has fulfilled the law. I want to share with you a message today that I had entitled The Ultimate Sacrifice. The Ultimate Sacrifice. Sacrifice. And what I'd like for you to do with me today is if you would get your Bible and turn to the Gospel of John. Turn to the Gospel of John. I'd like to look at two passages today. One of them is right there in chapter 10. John chapter 10. If you'd look there and find verses 14. And then uh, just uh, some of you may have to turn the page twice. Maybe just one time. But then put your finger in there at John 15. Uh, John 15, and kind of make a mental note of verse 12. We're going to read this passage together uh, this morning as we stop and think about the ultimate sacrifice. The ultimate sacrifice. Well, look there with me then, back at John uh, chapter 10. We'll pick up our reading in verse 14. Jesus himself is speaking to us. If you have a red letter edition, you will see 
Uh, the words are there in red. I am the good shepherd, Jesus says, and I know my own. I know my own, and my own know me. Do you know Jesus this morning? Amen. Amen. I know my own, and my own know me, even as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. Did you hear that? Jesus said, I lay down my life for the sheep. Verse 16, I have other sheep which are not of this fold. Now remember, he's talking to Jews. Now he's talking about the other sheep, the Gentiles, that are not of that little fold, which he spoke about way back in the Old Testament to his earliest uh, prophets and leaders. I have other sheep which are not of this fold. I must bring them also, and they will hear my voice, and they will become one flock with one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life so that I might take it up again. Now look at verse 18. No one has taken my life away from me, but I lay it down on my own initiative. I have authority to lay it down, and I have authority to take it up again. This commandment I received from my Father. And then, beloved, if you would just turn over to chapter 15, John chapter 15, and pick up that reading there in verse 12. This is my commandment, that you love one another just as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that one lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends, Jesus said, if you do what I command you. No longer do I call you slaves, for the slave does not know what his master is doing, but I have called you friends. For all things that I have heard from my Father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you would go and bear fruit, and that your fruit would remain, so that whatever you ask of the Father in my name... He may give to you. This I command you, that you love one another. Wow. What an incredible passage of Scripture, beloved. I mean, we could just kind of sit here for just a few moments today and just ponder the reality of all the truths that the Lord Christ has given us here in just these few verses. What I'd like you to think about today, as we consider this passage, and as we look at Memorial Day, a time to remember the sacrifice that was made by others for us, that the <laughs> ultimate sacrifice that has been made in the world is the sacrifice that Jesus Christ Himself has made. It is the only sacrifice, my friend, that has eternal consequence. I don't want it in any way minimized what the men and women who have given their lives for our nation have done. But what they did was for temporal purpose. It was for now. It was for this life. But my dear friends, what the Lord Jesus Christ has done for us in His ultimate sacrifice, He has done for our eternal well-being. I'd like you to consider three things this morning with me as we look at at the ultimate sacrifice that the Lord Jesus Christ has made. Would you consider with me today an intentional choice, a compelling call, and a definitive witness? The first one is right here in this passage that we're looking at there in chapter 10. Go back there, if you will, for just a moment this morning, and let's look at chapter 10, and there at verse 14, I am the good shepherd, Jesus said, and I know my own, and my own know me, even as the Father knows me, I know the Father, and I lay down my life <laughs> for my sheep. Consider the truth. Consider the truth of what Jesus Christ is saying here. We are His possession. He says, I know my own. And my own know me. And I lay down my life for the sheep. Now you know as 
Christians, we talk about the sacrifice that Christ has made all the time. In fact, I fear that sometimes we talk about it almost flippantly. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we don't really think about what that really means. Did any of you uh, get to see uh, The Passion of the Christ, the Mel Gibson movie? Did anybody get a chance to see that movie? You know, I, I went with a group <clears throat> from a church to see that movie. And, and I, I remember calling Penny to let her know, and I could hardly talk. It, it was so incredibly graphic. It was so poignant. In fact, I don't know, Penny, you never really actually have watched the whole movie. She can't even take it. I mean, my wife is very sensitive to things that, uh, you know, smack of significant violence. And, and I don't know that she's ever actually watched the whole movie in its entirety. And, and I think about what Christ actually did in terms of His sacrifice, beloved, and it's staggering. It's astounding to consider what He was willing to do. And I have to say to you this morning, I believe there's only one reason that Jesus would have done what He did. I believe that there's only one thing that could have moved the Lord Jesus Christ to literally look down from heaven, make a choice to obey His Father and do what He did by literally taking off the roads of heaven and coming to this earth to show us clearly what God had intended from the very beginning that He tried to reveal to us through Israel. And for whatever reason, Israel failed to accomplish that task. So He sent His very own Son. I believe the reason is caught up in John 3.16. Anybody know that verse here today? You know that verse? What does it say? For God, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Now I love it that we memorize that but I wish we'd memorize verse 17 because you know what it says? For He did not send Him into the world to condemn us. He didn't send Jesus to condemn us but that we might be saved through Him. You think about that for just a minute, beloved, and that will put a smile on a straight face. That will take somebody that's feeling down and struggling, and that will make them understand that this sacrifice, the ultimate sacrifice that Christ has made, is a sacrifice that was personal. It was for me, for Kenny Gooch. It was for Mike. It was for every one of us. God's love is so incredible. Christ's love was so powerful that He was willing to come and die for us. And yet we speak of His life and His death and His resurrection, but we don't really live our lives as we should and tell others. Let me ask you a question. Anybody here today got grandchildren? I used to pull out my wallet to show their pictures. Now I pull out my phone. You know, I can hold a lot of pictures of my grandbabies on 16 gigabytes of space, buddy. And I can spend the whole afternoon talking to you about my grandchildren and each one of them, how unique and precious they are to me. Well, let me ask you a question. Is Jesus unique and precious to you? Then why is it that we have such a hard time talking about Jesus? Think about that one for just a moment. You don't even need a picture. Your life is the picture. Your life represents, if you are saved, the sacrifice, the ultimate sacrifice that Christ has made and He chose it. He chose it for you. It was an intentional choice on His part. Why can't we make the choice at least once or twice in a day to just smile at someone else. To maybe wish them a God bless you. Or to maybe invite them to church. And make sure you tell them where it is because I drove by it three times this morning. <laughs> I was thinking I wish they pushed that sign out on something a little bit further so I could see it. Because you know, you drive by and see all those black cars and I think, oh my goodness, there's a funeral. What if it's a funeral on Sunday? But it's not a funeral, it's another church. Listen to me, friends.
Thank you.